Hello guys, welcome back to another video. Now then, today we're going to be talking about the common problems on the BMW M47 and the M57 engine. So the 2 litre diesel and the 3 litre diesel from BMW and I'm going to be showing you on my very own M47 powered 320D. So let's get outside and let's get cracking. Okay then, so as you can see we have the M47 engine here. This is the 2 litre 4 cylinder diesel from BMW. Now the M57, the 3 litre 6 cylinder diesel from BMW is essentially the exact same engine, just obviously two extra cylinders. Now what I'm going to do is go ahead and actually remove the engine covers just so you can see the engine in a little bit more better detail. Okay then, so we can kind of see the engine in a bit better detail now then and I'm actually going to start on one of the most common problems on these engines and it's actually something that has affected this engine and is still not right and that is actually with the crankshaft pulley also known as the harmonic balancer and it's this thing down here now as you can see this crankshaft this crankshaft pulley is quite loose you know it's uh, quite wobbly and essentially this has failed because the rubber has in fact split on it and essentially the entire pulley just separates in two parts and uh, yeah it's not a good day because it ends up destroying your entire drive belt and um, yeah when it comes to replacing these uh, crankshaft pulleys this bolt here it can be a real pain to remove. As you can see, mine is actually loose, but um, yeah, these can be, uh, you know, torqued up to like, over 400 newton meters. So yeah, that's probably the most difficult thing when it comes to replacing this thing, you know, is actually just getting the bolt undone. Now, in my opinion, when you are swapping out the crankshaft pulley, you should also do the entire drive belt kit as well. So the tensioners, um, the idler pulleys and uh, any other pulleys that are you know quite tight and uh, not as free moving as they should be um, but yeah i'd recommend definitely doing the whole lot at the same time just makes sense really the next common problem then and this is a problem that pretty much affects all diesels no matter which engine type they are and it is in fact the EGR valve. So if you don't know what an EGR valve does, it essentially recirculates the exhaust gases back through into the air intake to be burnt off again. Now, because you have sooty exhaust gases going from the exhaust manifold on this particular one through a exhaust um, gas cooler as well, and then back through into your intake, um, it actually clogs up quite a bit as well and because we have the um, crankcase ventilation uh, vapors then those two uh, mix together you know oil and soot essentially can basically just coat your entire intake manifold in a sooty oily sticky mess and um, yeah ends up just you know completely coating your intake ports as well so in my opinion, if you want your engine to last and you want it to be running at full performance and uh, you don't want to have to keep periodically cleaning out your intake manifold, best thing you can do is actually just go ahead and delete this. You can get a uh, straight pipe and then it's up to you what you want to do with the cooler, but you can blank it off or completely remove it. Now at some point I'm actually going to be doing a full delete on this. Um, but yeah, EGR, very, very common problem on pretty much all diesels today. The next common problem then is again something that affects pretty much all diesels if it does have one, and that is the DPF, the diesel particulate filter. So it's either going to be in one of two locations. It's either going to be straight off the uh, turbo on the downpipe, or it's going to be in a separate box in the center of the car. Now, if this diesel particulate filter gets blocked up, it can end up taking out your turbo. And so you kind of have a few options, really. You can either gut it, you can either fit a decat downpipe, or you can go ahead and just run it how it should be and hope that the thing does regenerate before it gets fully blocked up. Now, I'm kind of lucky because this is a 2002. It does not have a DPF from factory. 
Um, you can actually retrofit one, but why the hell would you when it's you know only going to cause you a lot of problems later on down the line. The next current problem then on the M47 and M57, and this is something that is critical on these engines, you really do need to get sorted, and that is the swirl flaps. Now, some models, the earlier models, do not actually come with the swirl flaps in place inside of the intake manifold. I believe this one does, so it is going to be something that I am going to attend at some point. Now, essentially the swirl flaps fail on these intake manifolds because they are held in place by two screws on a rod and the flap tends to let go when the screws come loose. And so it's just not worth the risk, you know, leaving them in place in these engines. So I would recommend doing a swirl flap delete. The next problem on these engines then is the crankcase ventilation breather. If you take a look back here, you can see that this is an aftermarket Vaco one. So this must have been replaced at some point, but essentially the earlier crankcase ventilation breathers, they tend to clog up because they have a, a loo roll style filter in them, which you are supposed to replace every other oil change. And uh, yeah, not, not many people are actually aware of this, so it tends to get blocked up and it can actually cause you to start burning more oil. The next common problem on these engines then is with the vacuum hoses. If you take a look down here, if you take a look at these vacuum hoses, they are pretty frayed and these get so brittle when they are, you know, old. It is just a, um, some kind of material over a, uh, over a standard rubber and these can end up snapping very, very easily. If you do have a vacuum leak, that's when you can start to get a rough idle. And uh, yeah, very, very common issue. A way to get around it is just replace all of the vacuum lines. I don't think there's too many on these engines, just for some nice, sturdier um, silicone ones. That's probably something that I'll do at some point as well. Not an expensive job to do, and uh, yeah, quite easy to do as well. The next problem then on these engines, and this is not something that is exclusive, to these engines but it is to do with the injectors so if you do start to notice some carbon and some soot around the injectors themselves then there's a good chance that they are letting fuel up the um, injector wells and essentially what's happened the injector seals have failed this is commonly known as black death um, so if you do start to notice a chuffing sound from your engine and you do notice some soot and potentially diesel um, on top of your rocker cover, then it's worth changing out your um, diesel injector seals. Another common problem with these engines then is the turbo. Now the turbo only tends to fail if, it, if the engine has had a lack of oil changes. As we know, oil changes are critical to the long lasting life of a turbo. So if you want your turbo to essentially last forever, I'd recommend changing your oil every five to 6,000 miles. You know, oil, a good oil filter is cheap enough. You know, you can do it once, maybe twice a year, and um, you're just essentially gonna keep your engine running nicely and um, prolong the life of your turbo. So yeah, oil changes critical for the running of your turbo. The final common problem today then is going to be with the glow plugs and not just the glow plugs themselves because glow plugs tend to last 100, 150,000 miles, but actually with the glow plug module on these engines as well. If you are showing a fault code for all four of your glow plugs, chances are it's not actually your glow plugs, it's more than likely your glow plug module, which is located right down there and it's often easier to access when you have your intake manifold removed so if you are going to be replacing your glow plugs on these engines i'd recommend doing your glow plug module at the same time okay then so that is pretty much the common problems that you can expect to find on the bmw m47 and the m57 engines I've got a lot more videos like this to come on the way. If you guys have enjoyed this video, please remember to give it a like, leave a comment down below, subscribe if you have not already done so, and I will see you all in that next one. Peace.